I read from verse or uh, only 15. Hallelujah. He said, But he, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise unto God continually. Stop there. The sacrifice of praise. Praise is a sacrifice God has sent. You don't have money to give to God. You don't have anything to give to God. As a matter of fact, He's the one that holds you and everything you have. Hallelujah. All what God requires from you is praise. Now you are still going to thank God for the breath of life that is in you. Because when God removes that breath automatically, you become so beautiful. beautiful. It is all image. Thank God. Thank God. Celebrate God. Celebrate God. Celebrate God. In Jesus' name. Let's stand up for champion of glory. And we are champion. Now we are going to pray, Lord. All our adversary, Father, put them to shame. Open your mouth and pray. Adversary of champion of glory. Father, put them to shame. Father, put them to shame. Everyone contesting with this ministry. Father, put them to shame. Lord, put them to shame. Lord, put them to shame. We are not in the night, in the land, in the sea, in the tree. Lord, put them to shame. Lord, put them to shame. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. We are still going to pray. Don't look at someone beside you. You don't know who is sitting or standing beside you. You are going to pray, Lord. Every agent of darkness inside this ministry, Father, let them be exposed and be disgraced. Open your mouth and pray. Agent of darkness needs to be exposed and disgraced in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. He said, let the wind blow. We are going to pray, Lord. Let the wind of your hand sweep anything you are not planted in my life, in the life of my children. Lord, let your wind blow in the earth and sweep everything you are not planted in my life, in this ministry. Lord, sweep it out. 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 Father, sweep it out. Whatever you are not let the wind of the Holy Ghost blow and sweep it out by fire in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name. Lastly, come with me to the book of Second Kings. Hallelujah. Amen. Second Kings chapter 2. Verse 4. And it took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the water and said, We are his Lord God of Elijah. And the water obeyed him. We are going to pray and call on the God of Elijah. Every mountain before your life, let the Lord of God destroy that mountain. Open your mouth and pray. Every mountain before shall of glory. Every mountain before your life. Every water in your Christianity days. Every obstacle in your salvation. Let it be parted. Let it be parted. Let it be destroyed. Let it be destroyed by fire. In the name of Jesus. We are the Lord God of Elijah. The God that answered by fire. The God that answered by fire. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. So I said, lastly, pray for the man of God. We are going to pray for the man of God. Say, God, speak to me through your servants. That word I needed from you. That word brought me from my house to be in your presence. Put my word in the mouth of your servants. Use it to change my story. Use it to change my story. Today my story must change. I am tired of this predicament. My story must change. I came to that presence for my story to be changed. Today will be the end of my story. I am moving forward. I am making progress. I am going higher. Thank you, Father. In Jesus, we pray. Lord, we thank you. You 
altar of life. Whatever that needs to be changed in our life, Lord, change that story. In the name of Jesus, mighty God, don't let poor as us wear is our God. In thee we put our confidence and we know you will never put us to shame. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' victorious name we pray. Ha ha. can you check in the score outside? Shout the living hallelujah. That is for the children. A louder hallelujah. If you know you have a shout a loud hallelujah. Amen. It's time to take our Bible ready. Our Bible ready to read you from the book of Malachi 4. Malachi 4. We are reading from 1 to the end, which is 6. If you are here, shout hallelujah. If you are not here, stay away from me. Hallelujah. Amen. I read. For behold, the which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that we leave them neither root nor branch. But to you who fear my name, the Son of righteousness shall rise with healing in this name, and you shall go out and grow far like the stuffy calf. You shall the food. Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in Europe for all Israel with his status and judgment. Behold, I will send you, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Seek the last verse. And he will turn the hearts of the father to the children, and the heart of the children to the father. Least I come and strike the earth with God. May the Lord bless this remaining to our heart in Jesus' name.
after this service, someone will see you and call you wonder. That will be your portion. Testimony time. Let us come those who overcome to the glory of God. First, let us give a clap to Jesus as we welcome our sister, Sister Jennifer. Put your hand for Jesus. Put your hand for Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Our God is good. All the time, our God is good. I am here to testify the goodness of God and to appreciate all what God has been doing in my life and my family. He has been so good to us. He has been so kind. He right? are not faithful to his word. that is always merciful and faithful to us. I say may his name be praised. I want to thank God for keeping me alive, for the health, good health he granted unto me and my family, even my extended family at all. I want to thank him. There are many who started January with us, but today we are there are no more. But me and my family, my household, and even you that is sitting down today, we are alive. It's not just because of the grace of God upon us, he's keeping us alive and saying may his name be praised. I am also thanking him for the wonderful things that he's about to do in my life and my family. I also thank him for the believer's circle that just passed. I know God has really come down to hear us by his mercies and I say may his name be praised. I just want to sing this song to worship the most high God because he's worthy to be praised. Holy is thy Lord. Like that, it 
bottle, uh, what do they call it? Some I don't know what they call it here. So I saw this at Jennifer. Oh my sister, um, this is how my way there. So we just stay for some minutes there. We were just discussing. So she said that uh, just me. Did you have you had an, an office the way they used to render it to people? I said, yeah, since I'm part of it, I said I've been going there before. They just come to me when I get the five minutes that I'm going to uh I'll buy some money to do something. When I feel they say for me, I will still go back there. So I finally did that. When I got there, I just look at the still time for me. So I just went to before the, because they closed there at 12 o'clock. When I got there, so I was just on my way going, this is the legs from the same. Be praising me. Just be praising me. I was just singing, you know, I was just going to praise this. I was thanking God, I was thanking God. So until I get to the, the gate of the, the office I was going to, so when I get there, I was like, okay, I get into that, uh, into that office. I saw a Nigerian woman there, so I knew her before. So we just went there and said, ah, she wants me to buy something that she's giving that's okay, bye. So I entered the other room again. I saw a uh, pastor Faith. So we are together, we just sat down together. She said she had entered by this place, but she wants to really come and confirm what they are doing here. So like, I said, I have come before, they said I should come again. So they said, okay. So we just sit there in the same uh, line there. So there's a woman, a white woman, in front of us. So we are just uh, waiting for the staff that they come and call us to attend to us. So they called them, uh, Sister uh, Pastor Faith. When they called her, so I was waiting, I was with my baby. My baby, we, she was doing many, many problems with that woman because I hold her tight to myself to not go and destroy people things there. So she said I should leave her to leave her. So from her to Pastor Faith and Kate, he said uh, Sister just be leave her, don't, uh, uh, don't be looking at her to not go and destroy things. So, so I was, my eye was on her. So, they start there just to come and tell me as finish that this baby is too beautiful. So they said, yeah, I'm not hearing what you are saying. So uh, uh, Pastor Faith, if I pray for the she said that the baby is too beautiful. I said, thank you. So she took my baby and, and she was going with her. So I said, where is this woman taking my baby to? So I, I was still looking at them. So she gave her a toy, a, a plastic toy. So my baby turned back. She was going to me. She was saying, mama, mama. I should come and look. As she was coming, behold, she fell down. In front of that woman that was in front of her, she don't spare that on the bed of my front. So uh, the thing, I would just sit down. So Pastor Fett said, go and take her. I said, no. And that man was hoping that that woman would just, because she's close to her, would just carry her out there. The woman was telling her, the woman was just looking at her. What is it? Mother, why are you sitting down? Go there. My baby was just like this. She was just looking at the woman, sitting at her in her face. The toy, she cannot put on this hand up. She cannot put on big the toy. She was just staring at the woman. I said, why? Why? Something else came to me. Say, why is this woman looking at your baby like this? I said, I don't know. He said, get up on the desk and sit down. So I just stood up immediately. So I said, that bad eye that this woman is using to look with my baby to death. I want to look straight to that eye. That eye cross runs into my mind. So when I get there, behold, what did I see? The I, I cannot see this black and white eye. I see blood. Inside the woman's eye, blood. All this place come out in vain. She was just like this. Come out in vain. I was, and yeah, I cannot go shout this is my face. Come, come and see what I'm seeing. I will just sit. I just sit. I just sit. It's like my enemy is dead. I see so. So it seems like they're light. But they come and will scratch out his eye. will scratch out all of me and I want to look fence. Ah, when I get this, I say, oh, what is it? Say blood of Jesus. I'm just standing there saying, blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. So the woman, I shake. When you shake, ah, the other one is very bad. Go back and she goes, she goes, she goes
They say, see, look at her, she's crying, she's looking at me crying. I say, God, I give you the glory. Is this the reason why you are telling me to give you praise? To bless my family and my going fine, come at this morning. I say, Lord, I said this baby you give to me. I say it's for sign and wonder, it's not for destruction. I say we will never be praised in the mighty name of Jesus. That is why I come out today to thank God for all you have been doing in my life. On our assignment of destroy the land of our children, our life, may only those fire strong them by fire by tongue in the name of Jesus. Please, as I said before, clap testimony will never permanent in your life. No one will steal your joy in Jesus' name. We are trying to control time. That's how we are asleep. Special number eight, man. Go straight to your testimony. You may not have something to do other people have time or they want to go to work. Amen. As we call on Sister Tony and for our testimony. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I just want to thank God for all He has been doing in my life because every day of my life is a testimony. Last month He saved my sister from the gunshots. When they were rioting in Iwari, they shoot a gun and the thing went straight to our room. Not only that, last week here, the devil just wanted to show his ugly face. But I just bless God that before the end of the day, God revealed himself and we glorify his name. I just want to testify his goodness in my life. Praise the Lord. Thank you for our testimony. Put your hand for Jesus. As we went up to start thank you. Put your hand for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise Pastor Jesus. I just want to thank God for my life, for my, for my children's life, and my husband's life, and my family and so. I just want to thank God for my um, because when I did better, I was having a little big sickness. It's not, it's not him. But since then, I've been, I've been going to hospital every, most of every two weeks that they come, but they have to be checking. Whether it's okay or it's, everything is it's all right. So every, since then I will be going to hospital to check on him. So ever since last Friday, so I was having an appointment. They were saying I don't want to give another appointment. I said no, God, this uh, uh, appointment, appointment. My baby is okay. Everything is all right with him. They said because the sickness he will have, it will maybe be affected. I said no, it will not affect my baby. My baby is all right. Now everything is okay with him. So that's okay, no problem. So the stop, that's okay. I pass it, I I show my baby is okay. So they have to cast every appointment they have given to me. So I just want to thank God for that. I just want to thank God for my husband also. They have taken care of us and my children. I just want to thank God, God that I had more, uh, uh, more year in my life. So we made the praise. I thank God for everything that we got us from the best. We made the praise. Thank you, Jesus. You know, Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Say the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. That healing will remain permanent in the name of Jesus. Let's welcome our brother, brother Brian. Put your hand for Jesus. Put your hand for Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, I'm here to, to thank God for His mercies, for His divine protection, His guardians, His blessings, and everything. The month of September is a very special month for me. I was born in the world. I gave birth to a child in the month of September. We are celebrating this month. This is my birthday. And uh, on the 8th was my son's birthday. Yes, for your life in the name of Jesus. We welcome the last and not the least, but our size for your testimony. I just want to thank God for the grace given to us for this week that just passed. Amen. He gave all the grace to wait on Him. Hallelujah. And believe me, God answers prayer. Amen. Those who get the heart, 
when it was made, the spirit of madness to cancel it. And God answers prayer. There's a lot of testimony. Amen. Please, if you have not been coming to prayer meeting for the sake of the testimony of our sister, that shows that we need to pray, especially in this end time. And I pray God will give us the grace. He said, may us always to pray and not to faint. Prayer is to destroy obstacles, while prayer is to bring us presence. And I pray that God will give us that zeal and set our prayer altar on fire. In Jesus' name. Day and forever. Praise the Lord. Listen, may the Lord bless you. You 
The Living the Holy Ghost entered ministries international that has outreach in many countries of the world. If I will afford to send you is a, the link to their website, you see, he ministers anywhere in the world, in the United States, in South America, North America, in Africa, in the many European cities also. Um, as the important information on Monday, it was already, no, on Wednesday, Wednesday, on Thursday, it was already ministry, on Thursday, it was ministry, right there, a man before coming over here. So we are supposed to host him on a Sunday, a Sunday of service. He also presently leads about his own church, but one of his own marriages is the overseas church that is also based in Prague, in Czech Republic. He's married to Madrid and have three lovely children. I don't want to speak much because the Holy Spirit will take over a great anointed man of God that you will experience. And I pray someone here will receive part of this anointing in Jesus' name. So, all this is to be on to welcome Pastor Festus to Zola. Lord, I thank you this morning 
And I bless you, Lord Jesus, for giving me this chance to be here among your people. And now, Lord, I bring this to Mel! Mel! Yes. Oh, I'm eating so much um, Swedish cheese. You can't go send back. Send back. Yes. Mm. Yes. <laughs> so much Swedish milk in your throat. Melt. Yes. God will to melt the hardness of hearts, the stubbornness, and the rebellion. He wants to bring, restore back to us our simple human, human emotions. Today, people can kill, they can do anything, they can, they have no feeling. People can deceive, they, they can do anything just to get what they want. They can ignore their mothers and ignore their father. They can hurt anybody, they can gossip anybody, they don't feel nothing about it. We are so self And that's not the spirit of Jesus Christ. And God said it. Before the coming of Jesus, He will send people, men and women, who will come in the same dress and anointing like Elijah. Who will reach out to the left, to the right, and bring two people together. Who could not see I to see? Jesus is the mediator of the New Testament. Now say with me, Jesus. Jesus is, is the mediator Jesus. of the New Testament. Jesus. You see, to sin, when sin came, man went this way and God went this way. Man and God become irreconcilable. Our nature became evil and contrary and opposing to the nature of God. God is perfect. God is holy. We are unholy. God is light. We are darkness. So there was no place to meet. We have a natures that we are completely irreconcilable. In fact, the Bible says we become enemies of God by the way we think, the way we behave, the way we speak. We become enemies of God. Sin separates us. The wall of sin. God is this way, man is this way, and there's a wall. So, and nobody could come between God and man and be in the middle and be able to bring us again back together to God. No angel, no man, no woman, no prophet, no king, no person could be able to stand between God and man until Jesus Christ came and died on the cross of Calvary. And he is the mediator. He is the middle. That is why he is perfectly God and also perfectly human. A mediator. Somebody who is not biased. Somebody who will not side with this person against this person. Somebody who will not take bribe or deceive. Somebody who is not blinded or seeking for his own gain. A person who is willing to pay any price to bring two people who could not see eye to eye and bring them again. This is what we need in the church. Yeah. This is what we need as Christians. There's so much division among Christians today. So much antagonism. So much gossip. So much hatred. We have big Bible in our hand and we still kill each other. We go to church and we still gossip each other. We still lie against each other. We still deceive each other. It ought not to be so. Jesus is the mediator of the New Testament. His work is to stand between God and man. The two irreconcilable nature. He took on him the sin of humanity. Our crime, our evil. Even though he was God, yet he emptied himself of his divinity and majesty. He put on the garment of humanity and was made in the likeness of men. He became one. Because sometimes, before you can be able to represent somebody, you need to put your leg in their shoes. Before you condemn somebody, put your leg in their shoes. And feel what they feel, and know what they know, and understand what they understand. So Christ came down from heaven. He put on our shoes. He put on the garment of humanity. He became like you. He became like us. 
He was able to experience temptation. He experienced hunger. He experienced racism. He was a Jew. He was hated. He was gossiped. He was rejected. He understand what you go through in life. He is God. He knows all about God. He knows all about heaven. He became, he became man and knows all about man so that he can become our best representative. So when you cry, when you cry to God, Christ can say, Father, I know by experience what she is going through. I understand what she is feeling now. He is the mediator of the New Testament. He's the one that stands between God and man. And today we need men and women who can be able to stand the gap. Men and women who are biased. Men and women who does not take side. Men and women who are blinded by the color of the skin. Men and women who are not blinded by whether you are from the east or from the west. The church needs voices, Christians, believers who are biased. Who can stand for the truth, biased by anything. Jesus, the mediator of the New Testament, who can stand between you and God and bring reconciliation. And end the animosities and the contraries. And the contentions. When you have misunderstanding with your brother or sister or with your friend, with your father or your mother, or with anybody, you would watch somebody who understands your point very well. Who know who understands everything, who will not be biased. And also somebody who understands the personality you are opposing to. He can become the, the right referee. Is that what you referee? referee? The umpire. The watcher, the one who can say, is enough now, is enough. Jesus is your mediator. And if we allow Christ, if we give him a place in our heart and life, and let him rule, let him communicate his nature to us, he can be able to bring us together in his love and heaven. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah! Now, and here the Bible talks about calls the Lord Jesus Christ the Son of Righteousness. Of Righteousness. In fact, verse 2 says, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arrive with him in his wings. The Son of Righteousness. Can you imagine the power of the Son? Can you imagine this? World without the sun. Without the sun. No clouds will grow. Things will collide on each other. The sea waves will crash on the beaches. You wouldn't know when there's summer or spring or autumn. You wouldn't know the seasons. And the Bible is saying that Jesus is a son of righteousness. Just imagine this world, sun is no more. No more sun. Everything will come to a standstill. No more light. You cannot, so crops cannot grow. They can arrive by the sun. If the sun is gone. Jesus, the son of God, is the son of righteousness. Today we can harness the sun for energy and power. We know what's called solar energy, solar power. And you can harness that and use it for anything you want. To heat up to light. Christ is the sun of righteousness. When I went to Czechoslovakia, as I came as a missionary, the Lord spoke to me expressly. He said to me, listen, first listen. What you must do, you must do quickly. Say with me, what you must do? What you must do, you must do quickly. quickly. He said to me, I have held back darkness.
for a season. I had pushed back darkness for a season. And he said to me, in a short time, darkness will cover this entire area. And the darkness will be thicker and worse than the darkness of communism. He said to me, I have, I have pushed back darkness just for a time. So what you must do, you must do now and quickly. Because very soon, very soon, thicker darkness than that of communism will cover this entire area. Many of us people, humans, we are deceived by the light of the sun we see. So we think, oh, it's a good weather today. Oh, it's a nice weather. Oh, I feel the warmth. I enjoy the heat. And we, we enjoy the houses and the buildings and Beautiful, wonderful, natural creation. I, I fly all the time and then I enjoy. I always have to look out from the plane, crossing the Atlantic or Mediterranean. I, I like to, in, in the night, I like to open up my window and look down. And I see the wonder of creation. I see the beauty of mountains and valleys and hills, trees and animals and flowers. I enjoy everything. I enjoy beauty in people, in nature. I like to see beautiful people. Nice car, nice wife. And listen, this sun that you, is above your head can be very deceptive. The things you see, the material things, all appear beautiful. The stars, the oceans, the mountains and the hills, the valleys, they are wonderful, but they can be very deceptive. I, I, I preach here in Europe all the time. And, and I, among white people, I said, do you know what happened? When I see these nice, beautiful streets, paved streets, beautiful, I enjoy it. Years ago, I was in Birmingham, in, in, in England, for a conference, beautiful city, Birmingham. And I came out from my hotel room and I walked to the, to the, to the, to the, to the hall, the meeting. And I can see the beautiful trees and the streets and beautiful people, well-dressed, neat, nice people. It was amazing. And I said, Lord, this is wonderful. And then he said to me, enjoy it, but don't. Enjoy it, but don't abuse it. That was the right word. Enjoy it, but don't abuse it. Say with me, enjoy it, enjoy it. but don't enjoy. abuse it. The white people are very, very angry when they see foreigners enjoying what they have done and abusing it. It is I want to tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. 
He said, you know? I said, yes, I know. I said, listen, tomorrow, they will play all the game for all the extra time, no goal. Not even one. It will end up in penalties. I said, and Italy will win by two goals. By penalty. I said, listen, when that happens, remember a preacher of Jesus Christ. Sell me a preacher. A preacher of Jesus Christ. I said, don't forget that. I have told you what will happen tomorrow in the second game. No goals, no goals. They end up in penalty and Italy win by two goals. He told me my hotel. Spent the night there. The next day I drove to, uh, to Padova. Was in my hotel there. Waiting for the meetings. Then here come the soccer. Well, you know the story. They play, 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 play. No goals. In Ella, it was like no goals. Power. But they were so noisy when they won the soccer that I wish they lost. <laughs> my hotel was by the roadside and I couldn't sleep. They were screaming all night. So what I want to say is this, look at the houses, look at the streets, look at them. I mean, we all dress better than ever before. There's more education, more beauty. Anybody can be beautiful. You can be handsome if you want to. Just brush your teeth and dress up well. You know? And so, and, 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 and so look at the streets we live in. Look at the trees and the gardens and the flowers and, and fountains and the cars we drive. I was, I told them, listen, at last, demons has built a paradise. The house is good, it's beautiful, but hope is living in it. A witch. The car is nice, but who is driving it? A hypocrite. The shirt is so nice, but who is wearing it? A crook. We have met the outside. Beautiful, but the inside is more evil now than ever before. I have seen many beautiful devils. I mean, demons with long hair. <laughs> we made the outside beautiful, but the inside, here we are in the clean church, clean everything. We all wear dress, we all look nice, but what about our hearts? <laughs> Where the lights never go up. It's not like Nigeria Nepal. Yes. The lights are always here. Everything is lit up. But what about the heart? Is there a light in the heart? Oh, yeah. At last, demons have been paradise. Where everything external is beautiful. But the inside, there's no light. The inner heart and the conscience of man. We talked before that if everybody was to be educated, then the world would be a piece of dust. The more we know, the more we destroy. All our knowledge and the science is all focused on destruction. Don't let this. Don't let the beauty around you deceive. If there's no light in the inside, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the Son of Righteousness. He is the real light that illumines the human heart and conscience. Until the light of the Son of Righteousness shines in your conscience, you can do anything and doesn't feel bad about it. And those things are about. You can destroy, you can commit abortion, you can rob and cheat and deceive and feel nothing about it. Without the sun of righteousness shining in our hearts, we can all come to church and do all the religious things and still all end up in hell. The sun of righteousness must shine in our hearts and keep shining. You know, that's why as I was going through the ministry, I, I'm, I'm not a perfect person, but I'm an honest person. And I asked God a question. I said, can a person prosper? Can a man feed his wife and children, pay his bills without being a crook? I said, 
say, God, can a, 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 a believer survive life without selling drugs? Can we feed our children, pay our bills without being prostitutes? I said, God, I don't want lies to feed me. If the only way to live is to lie, kill me now. I want truth to feed me. I want to prosper in the light. I want your blessings to come into my life. I don't want to be fed by hypocrisy. If we all have to steal and kill and deceive and lie and do forward life so as to feed, kill us today. Kill us now. Is it possible for a believer, a child of God, to live righteous to be able to take care of his family? I said, God, don't rush to answer me. Think about it first. <laughs> because this is very important to me. And the Lord gave me the answer. In the beginning, God made the heaven and earth. The stew and the earth was what? Void, desolate, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. The, the, the Spirit of God moved up. Say with the Spirit of God. Moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be what? Light. Listen, light has its own economy. Light has its own economy. Truth has its own economy. People who prosper in the darkness think that nobody can survive in the light. Light has its own economy. The economy of light is linked up to the truth of God. The economy of truth is linked up to the truth of God. And you and I have been called out of what he is man. God's plan for you and me is to be to prosper in the light. To be established in the light. Anything you get in the darkness, you will lose it to darkness. Yes. Anything you get by a lie, you will lose it to a lie. Yes. Lie has an expiring date. Now say with me, lies yes. has yes. an yes. expiring date. You see, lies doesn't last forever. Truth lasts forever. Truth is eternal. Light is eternal. And there's the economy of darkness, there's also the economy of light. And there are more wealth and riches in the light than in the darkness. There's more blessings and riches in the truth than in lies and deception. And so, but many of us Christians, believers, we were all sinners for sure, we were established in light. That's the problem. Before we came to Christ, we know how to play the game. We know how to, you know, use the flesh, use some little something there, get what you want. So, we are rooted, grounded, established in lies, in darkness. We know that's just the world we live in. We knew it very well. We grew up in it. That's what we learned from our fathers, our mothers, and everything around us was lie and die. So, we know. Then, then, then. God, who commanded the light to shine out of what? Darkness. Shine in our hearts. To lighten our heart so we can behold the glory of God on the face of Jesus Christ. The problem that we have is this as Christians. Today, Christians are established in nothing. We are rooted in nothing. The sinner, the unbeliever, is rooted, and so darkness works for them. We came to Christ, get born again, get used to church. Get used to religion, but was never in any way rooted and grounded in the truth. So somehow, truth doesn't work for us. Because we are neither established in the truth, nor are we rooted in lies anymore. So we are stuck in the middle. We don't know what works for us. 
So when trouble comes, we don't know we try to mix light and darkness and we become confused people. God's intention was you and I, once out of darkness, should be what rooted and grounded in the light. And be fully identified with Jesus Christ. And enjoy the full blessings of the life. And walk in the economy of truth. And be established. Many of us did not take any good time to try to be rooted and grounded and established in the light. When I got saved, I took my Bible personally. I was saved by divine visitation. 1985. September 7th, 9 o'clock in the night. Christ walked into my room. 985, December 24th, 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Now I was going to my uncle's home. It was Christmas time. I was walking up this road back home and prayer. As I turned back, went to our room there, closed the door. My sister was by the veranda. As I knew to pray, Christ appeared to me. And he brought a silver spoon. And he turned like a TV screen. And he started showing me my future. We, I see myself in the big crowds and big places, white people, black people in many parts of the world. He showed me my future from the very beginning. And I took my Christian life. I wanted to be completely established in the truth. In the light. To live it. To practice it. So it, it, it becomes my world. God wants life to be the world. The only wall you know. God want truth to be your wall. The only wall you know that you will say, I don't know how to do it. This is the way I know. What works for me is truth. What works for me is love. What works for me is mercy and life. God want you and I to be so rooted and grounded in the life that you know that this is what works for me. I love you so much. Believe me. I wish I had time. Yes. But I'm going to give you just an appetizer today. Listen, so much is going wrong. So wrong. And if we are not very quick to awake out of our slumber, if we don't wake up quickly, individually, churches and groups, if we don't wake up back quickly, if we do church as usual, Christianity as usual, if we keep on doing it the same way we are doing it, we will become extinct. We will become something of the history. Something has to happen now and quickly. We need to get back to the basics of the Christian life and experience. We need to give God his right place in our lives and give each other the right place in our hearts. Who so love? Who cares? Who can trust each other? Why most of us are poor, black people here in Europe, is because we cannot trust anybody. When we get born again newly, we could trust our brothers. We could, I could learn, I could, this man can come to my home and sleep. God is my witness, I don't need to lock my door. People will come back from anywhere they came to my house. I come sometimes, I see somebody I never known before in my room, and he spent days with me there. He's a Christian. You can trust your brother, you can trust your sister, you can lend and help each other, you can rely on each other. There was love, there was truth, there was confidence, there was assurance, there was mercy, there was no hypocrisy. You could feel free in the church. Today, you have to buy the devil because of the church. Lord, save us! Lord, save your church. Lord, save your people. Amen. And many of us. When we got saved, we will enjoy each other. We enjoy, we trust each other. We love each other. We, like, we don't, don't play hypocrisy. You can go to your brother's home and eat. Today, if your sister gives you food, you have to buy the best food for you. Uh, yes. Because you could put the milk and then start. Oh, give me 10,000, I'll bring you back tomorrow. All oh, hypocrites. He can't give it back. That's the end time, you see. If we don't get back, will become extinct. I command you today by the love of God. Amen. And I know some of you here, you, and I'm not saying you're about people at all. Not at all, not at all. You're not worse than anyone else. No, no, no. 
But I know there are some of you that, that are thirsty. You are thirsty. You are hungry. You desire truth. You desire love. You want reality. You want something more. Than you know, you know in your heart, there must be more than what I see every day. I want more. I want the real Jesus. The real thing. I want God's presence. I want his mercy. I want his power. I want to plunge to the ocean of his goodness. I want to hold my brother's hand and not be afraid. I want to hold my sister's hand and not be afraid. I want to know that I have somebody. I'm not alone on this island. Stop us. In every way. Touch our hearts. Circumcise us again. Purge us again. Purify us again. For you are healing my flow among us. For you are healing my flow. Your power, your mercy, your blessing. You are the son of righteousness with the healing in your wings. Father, set those free who are entrapped in any lie. Amen. Lies and, and deception Amen. and delusions. Amen. Father, set the hearts of those free who are bound in any deception. Amen. Open our eyes, shine your light that we might know and enter into the splendor of the Son of Righteousness. Amen. And now I command the healing in the conscience. I command the healing in the soul. I command the healing in the body. I break the power of darkness. I lose the power of God's kingdom. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Somebody is healing their spine. Spine is healed. And there's a breast tumor that has gone right now. Amen. Ooh, hallelujah. Amen. Somebody's eyes being quickened now. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's somebody here. God is anointing your footsteps from today. Amen. You will walk into your destiny. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So if you see this here, you can have one cup if you want to. It's a, it's a 50 or what do you call it here? Yeah. I have some of them, I let the pastor do that. Just a few of them, and you can get me a live online. We are live online, you can watch us all, watch me all over the world. You can get me a live online, and every information is in that seat. Okay, I let the pastor do that. I believe we are all blessed this hour. Amen. If you know you are blessed, just stretch your hand towards the man that served the mighty God. Began to pray for him. He's a man that served the almighty God. He's a man that served the God that can do anything. He's a man that served the God that made the impossibility to be possible. Your prayer for whatever or whatsoever God has put it in his hand, that same God will make it to the possible in his hand and to me. In the name of Jesus. And that same God will wash over him and his family by the power of the Holy Ghost. As we pray this day, so shall it be. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Hallelujah. If you are a tither in the house, in other words, if you want to pay your tithe for the glory of God, please move forward. Amen. 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 Amen.